Hey everybody, welcome back to Average at Best. As always, it's Rob here, one of our hosts. And today we're talking specifically about targeting with bowling, how to be more accurate, and what is quiet eye. All of that coming up next. So let's go ahead and just get right into it. Just bare bones, what is the simplest way of targeting in bowling? Well, if you grew up when you were young, you likely just aimed at the pins and just threw it down there. That's ultimately the simplest form of targeting and bowling, is aim for the head pin, the one right in the middle, and just throw it there. Now, once we get into a little bit more complicated, whenever you start to get into competitive, I guess, bowling, when you're bowling for higher scores, your targeting moves from the pins down to the arrows. Um, and then you're really just looking at the arrows, and that's it. That's just the next step in terms of complexity with targeting. And then whenever you get really complex into targeting, that's whenever we get into quiet eye and the three-point targeting system. That's whenever we take our break point, the arrows, and then all the way down to either the dots or the foul line, and we put all three of those points together to create an entire shape on the lane, not just hitting a spot, but creating a shape from front to the pin. This is why professional bowlers are professionals. They are incredibly good at not only hitting their marks on the lane, but getting that ball to shape properly so it goes through the pins properly. And this is one of the keys that um, if you're a novice with bowling, it's very difficult. You might be able to hit a mark a lot, but you just can't get your ball to go through the pins the right way. Some of that is in part due to power. Some of that is maybe in part due to getting your ball to shape the correct way down the lane, not just hitting a mark, but making sure you're hitting all three of your marks in succession. So what we have over here is a typical house shot lane graph. You can see it, it goes to 41 feet long, um, and it's, it's quite a high ratio. So you have a lot of dry on the outside, but in the middle, there's a lot of oil. One of the things about house shots that is really important in terms of making sure your ball goes through the pins the right way, and talking about those three-point targeting systems, is angle. Now, what I mean with angle is we can be aiming at the 10 board, but if we lay the ball down on 10 and hit 10, that's going right up the lane. If we lay the ball down on 15 and hit 10, that ball is going straight into the driest part of the board or driest part of the lane and is likely going to see the friction really early. So that's one of our keys, especially whenever we get on these tougher patterns, making sure our ball has the right shape, is not so much your accuracy at the boards, but your accuracy in terms of the angle where your ball hits the front of the lane to where it crosses um, at the arrows. So I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate this for you guys and hopefully I can do a pretty decent job of it. I'm gonna go ahead and roll a ball and I'm going to try to hit a specific two zones on the lane. I'll go ahead and pick out two zones here real quick. I don't know how well I fit into frame, but what I'm gonna go ahead and try and do, let me go ahead and get lined up and see where I wanna look. I will be bowling two-handed real quickly here. This applies to both two-handers and one-handers though. So don't fret about that. So I want this ball to cross right about 17 or 18 at the arrows, basically right in between the third and fourth arrow. At the dot, I want that ball to cross about 20, 21, and I wanna lay the ball down just right at 25. So pretty close to where those two dark boards are right there, like 23. So we'll put that all together. I think that was pretty good. Um, I mean, I know in terms of the arrows, that ball crossed basically right where I wanted it to. So that was just putting the front part of the lane together. That's where everybody focuses differently. I know you're probably looking at my torso right now, but everybody focuses differently. Um, I literally, my eyes have lower average focus than a normal person. I find it easier to focus on objects that are a little closer. Maybe I just need to wear glasses, <laughs> but I don't look too much at the down lane because I know if I hit at the arrows, if I hit at the, the dots, if I hit at the, the foul line where I want to go, if I hit those, if I hit those three areas, I know my ball is going to end up down lane where I want it to because it's going to have the right angle at the pins. So that's just one example. Um, another example, we're going to go ahead and aim for the same area but I'm gonna move a little bit farther to the right. So I'm still gonna hit 17 or 18, but instead of from way in, I'm gonna be standing much farther to the right. I'm gonna hit 17 or 18 at the arrows, 
while also hitting 17 or 18 at the dots and 17 or 18 at like the foul line. Here we go. See, that, now I, I hit the right spot at the arrows. I think I was a little bit to the right of where I wanted to be at the foul line. My point still stands. Obviously this is very drastic, but this is to prove my point. We still hit 17 or 18 at the arrows. The biggest difference was our angle. Our angle change was drastic. As you can see, the, the, those were two very different angles, very different results. And it's obviously I went with a very drastic example, but this is my form of targeting. I look at the arrows, I look at the dots, and then I don't go all the way to the foul line, but I go within about the first foot and kind of make sure that my angle from that foul line to the dots to the arrows is correct. Now, one of the things that I've been trying to work on recently is um, there's, there's a common effect that if you stare at one specific spot for a while, and I'm sure you've seen this in different, in different books or, or whatever, seen it online, if you stare at one area for a while, some things in your peripheral will actually just straight up disappear. So I've been trying to get a lot better at look at the arrows, look at the dots, look at my close point about a foot off the foul line and just stare there. One thing I try not to do is be tentative. We all want to hit our mark, but don't go into it thinking like I have to split the board down the line. If you get the general angle correct, even if it's a board or two right, a board or two left, if your angle is the right direction, if you have a pattern that even helps you out just a little bit, chances are you can still get your ball to get there. So now I'm going to expand out of my comfort zone a little bit and I'm going to go to the typical professional quiet eye and I'm going to look at break point, arrows, and then down to the dots. That's going to be my goal here. And I'm going to line up in a similar area and we're going to see. Now in terms of my break point, I'm going to go ahead and line up. I like to line up first so that way I can get a mental picture down the lane. So I basically am throwing my ball like at the 10 pin. So for me down there, there is a line in the lane. I'm not sure if the camera can really pick it up. I want my ball to be exiting that line right about board like 13. So between the second and third arrow down that line. So we're going to go ahead and aim there. And then we're also going to yet again aim like 17, 18 at the arrows and then at the dots about board 20 and just zone in on it and be aggressive. All right, so that actually went pretty well for me. I usually don't, I usually don't split boards that well. That looked pretty good. So we took the, fr the front part of the lane out of it. We went up to the dots, arrows, and then down lane. I think I was a little bit right down lane. My ball probably got more to like board 10. And I think that that's actually where I wanted it to be. I think I misjudged a little bit because of my angle where I wanted the ball to be. 10 probably makes a little more sense because I'm throwing at the 10 pin from farther left. But this is how competitive bowlers target. They use a targeting system. I mean, there are bowlers out there still that are very good, very competitive, who just look at a dot or a board on the lane and they just go out there and split that board. And I find, for me personally, that's really tough. The best way that I can find miss room, the best way that I can be aggressive and attack the lane with also still being accurate, is to have a multi-point system so that way my angle is correct. If I miss by a board to the right on everything, my ball's angle is going to be the same. It's just going to be mirrored a board to the right. So that's ultimately my goal. My goal is to just make sure that my angle is correct. And worst comes to worst, if I miss, I miss on every, on everything. So it's just parallel. All right. I know I've thrown a lot of info at you guys today, but I want to leave you with one last thing. And that's something that I've personally been working on since I started bowling two handed. And today, I believe it, that's why I'm actually so accurate today. And that is aggressiveness. So I've found myself, especially at tournaments and stuff, whenever I bowl two-handed lately, I've been very tentative. As you can hear, all of the lanes are turning on behind me. Apologies for how loud it is in the background right now. But 
Yeah, so that really is aggressiveness and explosiveness. What I try to do in my very last step into the foul line is drive into the foul line and really come through the ball. And I found that as long as I am, I am dialed in on my mark and I am aggressive into the foul line, that I'm throwing A, just the shot is just really good off my hand, really crisp. As you saw, both of those strikes were just off the hand, really confident, really good. And, uh, and B, um, I found that my accuracy has gone up because I'm not, I'm not worried about being perfect. I am just looking at a mark and I'm trusting myself to go up there and hit it, and I'm hitting it aggressively. And, and that's one of the things that, um, that's one of the things that Jason Belmonte, if you watch him when he is in this spot, um, in his approach, his, his angles of his body, his position, is just so aggressive into the foul line. And I think that's one of the things that makes him so great. He gets into that aggressive position. I call it aggressive. It's just there's just a lot of energy there that you're driving into the foul line. Um, that's what I mean by aggressive. But anyways, Jason Belmonte is one of the greatest at this, um, and he gets to that spot with zero effort, which I think is what makes him so great. Um, so anyways, yeah, this was just a little bit of a guide on the three-point targeting, the quiet eye. Some different systems, because I use three-point targeting a little differently for most people. Instead of breakpoint arrows to the dots, I use arrows dots to the foul line. And uh, it might be different. And like I said, maybe I just need to wear some glasses. Whenever I looked at the breakpoint on my last ball, I ended up throwing a really good shot. So, and oh, I guess I should clarify. How I look at these is I'll set up with my ball. I will look at the arrows first in the order that I told you guys. It's arrows first, then we draw that line down to the dots. So it's usually about two or three boards to the left for the dots, and then another two or three boards to the left for the foul line. And then I will just look at that area on the foul line, go and hit it with aggressiveness and hit that line that's in my mind, that imaginary line angle that I want my ball to travel on. So, yeah, I realized I didn't clarify that. That uh, the, the last thing, so breakpoint arrows to dots, the last thing that you're looking at should be what you zone in on. So it's dots. So, um, but remember, everybody's different. Maybe you're just a uh, look at the arrows type of person and that works for you. Um, but I challenge everybody here to go try this out. Please leave your thoughts down below in the comments. And if you thought this video was helpful or you have any questions for us, um, you could leave a comment. It's tough for us to get to comments. Believe it or not, we do have actually quite a few on the channel often. Um, so please check out the Patreon down below. Um, that is A, a place where you can support the channel and B, an area where you can directly communicate with us. Um, you could send us a video, pictures, whatever, um, where we could give our exact thoughts. Um, we have bowled collegiately for many years. We've, we've worked with some younger kids, but we are certainly not professionals. So by all means, it's up to you guys. Um, but if you enjoyed this video, if you took something from it, please leave a like and subscribe. It does wonders for a channel like ours. We recently just crossed 5,000 subscribers. So that's kind of amazing. We never imagined that uh, this channel would be able to go this far. So. Um, we're reviving it from the dead, and uh, we're going to get back to making content. So, I, And I had a blast today recording the videos. So thank you all so much again. Um, check out some other videos that we have. We have uh, simple videos on how to bowl two-handed, videos one-handed that are really dive into the pro release. Um, please check out those videos if you want more uh, other helpful tips on how to become a better bowler with either one of those styles. Anyways, that's enough of my rambling. Um, I hope everybody has a wonderful day. Peace out. I guess I shouldn't have stopped filming. This is a testament to the accuracy.